Hey guys, another episode of Swapology. Today we are talking about what is arguably the most important component of our Frontier build that we're working on, and it is the transmission and transfer case combo. What you are looking at right here is a 2010 Tremec TR6060 six-speed manual transmission out of a uh, Camaro. And the transmission has been modified so that the back half of the transmission housing is actually from a C6 Corvette. And the output shaft in the transmission is also from a C6 Corvette. That might seem like a weird combination of parts, but it was done for a very specific reason because C6, I believe 07, 08 Corvettes Manual transmission base models had a Tremec TR6060 transmission in them, but they were transaxles. So they were mounted in the rear, not the front. So there was no bell housing and they connected to the Corvette torque tube. But because Corvettes have a transaxle in the rear, the differential in a Corvette bolts straight onto the transmission. Now we used an 0708 Corvette output shaft and tail housing because an 0708 Corvette output shaft that interfaces with the rear differential is a 27 spline unit. And remember that for later, that's gonna be important. But the reason we did a hybrid of the Camaro and Corvette parts is so that with the Camaro front end, we still have a bell housing that will bolt directly to an LS engine. So we've got a traditional front half like you would find in a Camaro. We use the Camaro and not the CTSV TR6060 because the Camaro remote shifter bolts on the top and then extends off the back pretty far. There's like a long linkage from the factory in the Camaro, but because it bolts into the top, we are able to actually buy aftermarket shifters that will mount right here for putting a shifter in our front tier to use this transmission. Um, this transmission also, because it came out of a Camaro, has the 6AN feed and return for our transmission cooler. So if we're doing track use with the truck, it will help keep the transmission cool, uh, fluid cool. It's got the temp sensor here, so we can put an aftermarket temp gauge on to monitor our transmission temperatures. We would like to run a haul tech on this truck someday, so we'll be able to log that information right in our standalone. But again, now we're gonna get back to that 27 spline output shaft and Corvette tail housing. Uh, the Corvette tail housing, again, because the differential bolts to it is flat and it has obviously a bolt pattern that would have bolted to the differential that was in that car. That allows us to make an adapter to bolt to that flat surface. If we still had the Camaro tail housing or even T56 Magnum tail housing, any other normal rear wheel drive transmission tail housing, you would just have uh, the output shaft with like a slip yoke type setup for going to a drive shaft to rear wheel drive. But because we have this flat flange that's on the uh, Corvette tail housing, we're able to make this adapter. What you see from right here to right here is a custom adapter that we designed and built in-house to allow us to put a transfer case behind this TR6060 manual transmission. So this adapter, it's a multi-piece adapter. There's a, a flange here that bolts to the transmission. There's a flange that bolts to the transfer case. There's a tube in the middle and a plate for uh, putting your transmission mount onto. But this bolt pattern is a standard Chevy transfer case bolt pattern. Now that 27 spline output shaft that I talked about, I've mentioned multiple times now on that Corvette output shaft, is the exact same spline count and diameter that you would find on a 4L60, 4L65, 4L70 output shaft. And why is that important? Because Trailblazer SS's came with 4L65, 4L70 transmissions. I'm sure somebody on the internet will correct me on that. But this is a Trailblazer SS transfer case. This is not a typical pickup truck off-road 4x4 transfer case. This is an all-wheel drive transfer case. What's the difference? A typical 4x4 transfer case, when you're just driving normally, it's in rear-wheel drive mode. No power is getting sent out the front output shaft at all. 100% of the power is going out the rear output shaft to the rear end. And then you either have an electronic switch on the dash or a manual lever to switch from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive. And when you make that switch, it actually 100% locks the output shaft for the rear and the output shaft for the front together. So they have to spin at the same speed. That's fine for like four by four use off-roading or adverse weather, slick roads, snow, things like that. But what most people might not realize is that a vehicle on pavement, when it goes around a turn, the average speed of the front wheels is slightly uh, faster than the average speed of the rear wheels. 
they actually travel through a different arc as you're going through a turn. So if you try to use four wheel drive with the true lockup between the front and rear on pavement, you would could actually break the transfer case, break drive shafts, wear out your tires, call, cause all sorts of strange handling behavior because the front and rear at drive shafts are trying to spin at the same speed. So it's gonna make some slip happen at the front and rear. What this all wheel drive transfer case does differently is it's not a direct coupling between the front and rear output shafts. It actually has a viscous coupler like you would find in a limited slip differential in the rear end of some factory applications. So this is 100% all the time, always sending power to the front wheels, always sending power to the rear wheels. It's a 70-30 split. So we've got 70% of the power going to the rear, 30% to the front. And because it has a viscous coupler in the center of the transfer case, it will allow the front wheels and rear wheels to spin at different speeds when we're going around turns. What's all this mean? This means that we are going to be, be able to have a twin turbo LS, manual transmission, all wheel drive, Nissan Frontier pickup truck. I'm gonna say it again and let that sit in a little bit. It is a twin turbo LS, six speed manual transmission, all wheel drive, Nissan Frontier pickup truck that we are going to lower. If you've been looking at the other episodes about this build, we're converting it to four wheel independent suspension using Armada suspension parts. We're actually making the, the track width wider by using the Armada parts so it will handle better. Um, we've got some crazy, uh, I think they were what, 315 wide tires at all four corners, the Pirelli uh, SUV performance tires. We're building this truck to handle and we're building it to just be an all around monster. We want to use it for autocross. We want to go out on a road course with it. We want to drag race with it. We want to do everything we can with this truck. And the all wheel drive manual transmission setup is going to make it super, super fun. We are really excited about this. Uh, this is a little bit of a brainchild that I've had for years now. Um, this adapter, it is one of two that currently exist. The second one is actually going to Jeremy from Motto at Faster Proms. You can check him out on his channel and check out his build. He's putting his identical transmission transfer case setup into an S10 pickup with a twin turbo LT motor, a Gen 5 swap. So that's going to be pretty awesome too. We're actually hoping to do a little competition between the two vehicles sometime next year. Again, yeah, I said next year and that's a ways away, but we've got lots of builds going on in the shop and this is a pet project of mine. So I can't invest every week in it or else other cars don't get built, but we're planning to have this thing ready for spring of 2020. We're super excited about this build. Thanks so much for tuning in. Again, please like, subscribe, share this video with your friends. Uh, we're trying to grow our YouTube following as much as we can, and we're really excited about this build, and we hope you are too. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. We will talk to you soon. Bye.